So where do you see yourself with law in the next five to 10 years? And how does, how do you evolve from where you are today in terms of your goals, your wishes, your desires to, to take your practice to another level? Wow. Uh, I, I think I'm going to answer that, that in context. And I will say I'm very, I feel very fortunate to, um, I will be the, I'm currently president elect for the Arizona Trial Lawyers Association. And I'm super excited about that um, because we haven't had a woman president in about 20 years, <laughs> maybe longer. I didn't exactly go back and count. It's been a long time since we've had a woman in this post. And I'm in this post because I had a colleague of mine who almost 10 years ago said, you have to do this. You have to be on the board. You have to be more active. We don't have enough women. We don't have enough um, minority women. And you owe it to the women who come after you. And that did it. That's yes. like taught me that I needed to be more active and, and to, to take a, a, a role because I didn't have those mentors um, when I was younger. I didn't have other females reaching out to me and saying, hey, I'm available. Um, so I, as much as I'm thankful and so grateful for my male colleagues who took the time to make me a better child lawyer, I would like to be that female for, for other women. Yeah. So um, in, in this post as president, um, I think I would like to address that the, the changing practice of law. Arizona just went from one of the most conservative states on attorney fee sharing to probably the most liberal, where now we will allow for non-lawyer law firms. There are referral fees permitted. And I'm all, I've been seeing for four years the writing on the wall because we don't have caps on damages. We're going to be seeing a huge influx of not only advertising firms, but um, uh, large firms from out of state, the, you know, the call centers that are going to pretty much, um, I, I feel, I hate to say this, but I've been saying it to, to my, my colleagues that I think the solos like us are we're not going to be around much longer. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't think we can afford to compete with the kinds of advertising and solicitation dollars that are out there. Uh, I think it's absurd to even try. Uh, I don't, I, I, I stopped any kind of marketing effort years ago. And, and, you know, word of mouth on big cases and referrals is it's still possible. Um, I've, I've been practicing for over 20 years, but um, there's, we are rapidly changing into a lot of the other states like, like California and Texas that have you know, a lot of ad lawyer advertising. So I, we're going to have to rethink the, the business of law. And while I, I tend to agree with Joe Fried that, you know, hiring practice managers and that type of thing is, is really important. It has to be done in the context of seeing this as a, as a very changing field because the larger firms are, they're going to be present in your state if they're not already. And there are certainly, I think it's going to divide very sharply into the numbers, uh, uh, mid, mid range advertising firms that just do high volume. And then there's going to be the prestigious firms that everybody knows their names because they're nationwide and they've, you know, they've got whatever billions and dollars of recovery. And then there will be a few at the bottom who are, um, you know, ideally still thriving, but I think for the most part, other practices are going to have to look into developing other practice areas or, you know, I'm, I'm sort of in this myself, I yeah. feel a little bit more fortunate because I have consulting um, and that's, a, it's, and I get a lot of my cases, I get brought in on other people's cases because they recognize that I have a, a, a background in, in a traumatic brain injury and they want the benefit of that. So I get, I've been brought in on other cases, not just in Arizona, but out of state. So I, I feel like I'm less impacted, but I'm, I'm deeply concerned for um, the small and solo practitioners because I think it's going to look a lot different. Yeah, I mean, um, for myself. <laughs> Right. Oh, right. sorry. I was just thinking, you know, for myself, I really don't know. I mean, I have, I have, I would, I love the consulting. I want to continue that, you know, for a, a few more years. Um, certainly I see myself doing this for a long time. I love it. But yeah. I think a lot of it, again, the, the, even my growth is going to have to be considered in, in the, the changing practice of the plaintiff's, uh, plaintiff's bar. 
Yeah, no, I, I, as you know, I travel the country and I hear concerns like this in a lot of states. And, and in fact, there's a lot of young lawyers that I work with that um, not only think that there is a need to reinvent themselves because there is so many big advertisers, especially like in Florida, you know, you've got two to three firms that like own 80% of the market, right? right. And then you have everybody else who's trying to compete for the rest of the business. And so there is a lot of that um, going on. But also, I think when somebody is good and they truly are in it for the right reasons, that the work always comes, you know. And and so as long as you're doing what you're doing with passion and you're invested in the best interest of your client, I think people seek out the the attorneys who are taking the time. They're not just, you know, a number or part of the mill. Um, they're very much focused on client care and they give them the respect that they need. And I think that will never go away, no matter how much money enters, I think, the space and and the advertising takes, takes place. Um, but the other thing that's interesting that I've heard lawyers talk about is, you know, really diversifying the practice um, area that they're in, you know, today. And one example is to get into other practice areas like mass torts. And I do work in mass torts and I see a lot of single event attorneys show up to a lot of our events now because they one, they need a change. They want to learn something new. Um, and it's an exciting world where things are moving very fast. The landscape is changing constantly. But then also that there is a lot of potential for um, making money in, in in a way that you wouldn't see the cash flow come in if you were just practicing single event cases. So I think in, in all of the crisis, right, people um, do find ways, sometimes they're forced to find innovative ways to stay in business and do things um, a little differently. So with Arizona changing the laws and Utah changing the laws, there is no doubt in my mind that a lot of money will come into the state and they will try to take over, <laughs> I guess. I guess it remains to be seen what, what lawyers, you know, solo practitioners will do to kind of, you know, reinvent themselves and shift themselves to have another focus where they're not only still very needed and necessary, but the work that they do is also just as impactful. Mm-hmm.